We are dealing today with solving quadratics by square roots. So, you have got a couple of ways to tackle these. Again, the inverse of something that's squared, something that's a quadratic, is taking the power of one half, or if it's simpler in some cases, you just take the square root of it. We're doing inverses. And so with all of these, a couple of things to keep in mind. Typically, I shouldn't even say typically, you're going to. Quadratics have two answers. What's the double root? In which case you'll have the same number twice. So remember that with these, because that'll be the next quiz where people get hammered the most because they forget to put plus minus and I'm like, oh crap, you missed half the answer on all of these. Uh. So no decimals. If we get radicals, we break them down. If they do, we'll see. Okay, first things first. Oh, look at that right off the bat. Square and square root go away. Whenever you do the square root step, immediately put plus minus after the equal so you don't forget. But, oh boy, square root of 60, Hardy, I don't think that, I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a nice one. Yeah, we're not doing decimals. So you know the question that's coming. Name me a perfect square that goes into 60. Four. So we got four and 15 will get me to 60. If you forget, start taking some perfect squares and dividing them with your calculator until you find one that goes in nice. So now that we've broken that down to 2 square root of 15, much happier. So sometimes we're going to have to do a little breakdown. Not a big thing, though. The other thing to be careful of, and this isn't so much on this one, but when they're perfect squares, you have got to isolate your squared term before you square root it. You cannot do square root, square root for step one here. That will not work out well. So once we divide by five and go into square root mode, is there a perfect square greater than one that will go into 13 nicely? Nope. So in that case, the radical just stays, again, because we're not doing decimals. This is going to happen more often than this does, just as an FYI. And so take a moment. I'll, I'll do a free thing. I'm going to do a, several of these today. Try out number three. Make sure, again, you isolate your radical first. And when you get to the end, See if you can break it down or not. That's going to be the key. Got to get the minus 8 out of there. Got to get the 3 out of there. And then we go square rooting. There is no, no perfect squares. They're going to go into 10. It's actually going to help us make that get any lower. It's all I can do. But the twists are coming. Here's a good start. If you see fractions in front, I'm going to continue to beg. Don't write that you're dividing by a fraction because most people, if I put them on the spot, It'd be like, I don't know. So just multiply by the reciprocal instead. It's, it's going to make life easier. So now here, we're not multiplying this out. We're not foiling it out. None of that. This time, the next thing in my way of getting to x is that squared, because I can't minus the 4 while it's stuck in here. So we're all ready to the square root step. So that just leaves us with the stuff underneath, the x plus 4. 
Square root of 36 is perfect. Plus or minus 6, that's nice. Here's the part we got to be careful of. Yes, I want to minus the 4 over. But it doesn't make it plus or minus 2. What's going to happen here is that plus or minus kind of acts like a little wall. So the negative 4 can hang out on this side, but it's not allowed completely over right at the beginning. But this also can be simplified. Don't leave it this way. Here, this could be negative 4 plus 6. It could be negative 4 minus 6. And I can simplify them both. So you can see now where if I tried to say it was plus and minus 2, I'd have half the answer right, but half of it wouldn't be. So if it breaks down nice, you can literally get your two different answers that way. But that's not always going to happen either. You're like, Hardy, why are we doing the same thing again? Because there's a twist this time. Okay, fraction, same thing. Still have the x stuck in the parentheses, still got to do the square root. This is where things start to change. We know that's the plus minus step. We've already dealt with 60, so I mean, we'll keep this simple. I can see what the breakdown's going to be, so I'm just going to use this. for the moment of truth. I got to add the 5 over here. Okay, but oh yeah, that's like a little wall. So what's this going to look like? The 5 can come over. It can add over. It does not penetrate the wall though. And once I get over here, no, you cannot combine these and call this, let's see, 7 square root of 15 and 3 square root of 15. Because here's what I would tell you. You're like, wait, that's the answer? It is. Because if I told you if you add 5 plus 2x and 5 minus 2x, would you tell me you had 7x and 3x? I hope not. They're not like terms. Okay? Same thing here. This has a radical. This doesn't. So that's like an x. I can't combine a radical with something that doesn't have one attached to it. That's the biggest issue people run into in this whole section, is when am I done? Can I keep going? Like when it's just numbers? Yeah. Can I keep going if there's a radical on this one? No. No, you may not. So, again, that's why I put, for a concept that's pretty straightforward, why I put so many examples because there's all these little twists and turns that if you can see them, you can avoid some trouble. And I kind of notice here, I'm like, wait a minute, this one, this one's looking more like number four did. Because 16 is a perfect square. So again, when I minus the one over to get x by itself, and I am a fan of writing these steps out because that's another place I see lots of mistakes get made. People try to go so fast, negative 1 plus 4, negative 1 minus 4. They go so fast, want to get done so quick that, you know, bunches of things get a little kooky. Let's see. Do I see? All the, oh, yeah. My last two weirds. We're going to skip 7 for now. 7 is not weird. 7 is not weird. 8 and 9 are weird. Weird. This is why I don't like the division thing again. Here, if you've got that fraction in front, not distributing. Nope. Multiplying by the reciprocal. Some of you are like, Hardy, that, that's going to be awful. No, it's not. Just hang tight. Check this out. Not as bad as we thought, 32.4 times 5 over 2. See, turned out nice. Now it's normal. It wasn't a minute ago, but now it is. 
Just got to stay patient. 81 is a perfect square. And we're starting to look at number four and number six, staring us right in the face again. Subtract the five over. And again, if there's no radicals, I should be getting exact answers out. Okay. So this last one, it's unique. It's not like any of the others we've done because I've got the squared inside the parentheses now instead of outside. So here, I got to do all this other, this, these two things got to go bye-bye before I start doing anything else. So I'm going to add 22 first. We're going to get that out of the way. I'm going to divide by four next. I will have people normally ask, well, what if I gotta let my brain think for a minute. Okay. Hardy, what if I distributed the four? Would I end up with the wrong answer? And the answer is no. You'd be okay still in this case. But again, you're making more steps than you need to. Because now it's normal. You're like, wait, why'd the parentheses go away? There's nothing there anymore that I gotta distribute. I mean, I can distribute one. But since everything's gone, the parentheses can go bye-bye. So now I can go ahead and add over, and it ends up being a really normal problem, even though it didn't look like it was going to be at the start at all. So again, I know I say this all the time. This is about detail. How, how close of attention to detail are you paying? With pluses and minuses, what can I break down? What can I not? What can I combine? What can I not? I don't know. So, but yeah, but it's not long on the notes, though. That's always a nice thing, especially on a Friday. So... Here's what we're going to do. Now, I'll say like I always do. If odds end up being enough, that's fine. But here's the thing. On your sheet, you don't have answers to the odds in the front because I'm like, well, if we do the puzzle, I mean, puzzle, you're going to know. My key, I have my key up front. You can, you can check some things as you go if you want that way if you're going odds mode. But when you get to the back, there are solutions. Now, this is going to be a, a rewind of bits to things we've done before. So let me take a moment here. I just want to do a couple of these with you to get you thinking this through. Because this is excellent review so you're not forgetting everything that you just did with the graphing. Because you know it's showing back up. So when I'm doing these, okay, three different forms. So vertex is right there. I'm, I'm staying away from the some from the vertex form. I'm going to come down here. So here, I'm an intercept form. So to me, the easiest place to go, shame on me, I didn't put the coordinate points there. I'm doing it down here. We're setting each of these equal to zero. So I would get what? X equals two and X equals negative four. Y'all are like, Hardy, where are you at? Page two on the practice. So two, zero, negative four, zero. Now this other stuff, do I know yet? I could max or min. My A value is negative three which means my parabola is opening down before I ever look at anything. So that would be a max, okay. Now, vertex, it depends. Do I wanna go look around in my calculator and see if I see symmetry? Maybe. Otherwise, I can take these two values, I'm gonna add them up, and I'm gonna divide by two, so negative two divided by two is negative one. There's my axis of symmetry. There's the X value of my vertex. I could just plug in negative one for each of those. If I don't want to mess with Y equals, you could put this in Y equals and take stuff off the chart. I don't care. 
But I'm just saying, if you don't think of that, oh, I don't need all them parentheses. I could just take that negative one and stick it in for each of the x's. Holy moly, let's double check that. That seems like a crazy number, but it could absolutely be right. I'm just going to double check. Uh, if I look at the picture, let's see if the picture goes way off the screen. Oh, it does. Let's check this out. Negative 1. Oh, yeah, there it is. Negative 127. I was right. But I used the calculator to check me, which is never a bad idea. Compare the width of y equals x squared. If my a is negative 3... We've got a vertical stretch of 3. And again, I'll mention, since you're going to see it in the answers at the bottom, if it's larger than 1, it's going to be a stretch. If it's less than 1, you're compressing it. You're smashing it down. It's going to make it wider. So if you're seeing those words, just so you're kind of seeing. So that's how I would play with one of those. And then the last one I'll say, because there's a couple here in standard form, we'll play with one of those too. Here again, do the stuff you can do easy. So you're like, okay, wait, max or min? My A value is 2. This opens up. That's going to be a min. It. Now the rest of this, I'm going to have to do a little bit of work. So to get my x value, my line of symmetry, I'm going to do the opposite of b over 2a. The opposite of b over 2a. Negative 20 over 4 would be negative 5. Again, your call. If you want to, no problem going to the calculator here. We'll chat manual too here in a moment. So you're like, all right, negative 5, is that in the middle? It certainly is. Negative 5, negative 2, ding, ding. X-intercepts occur when Y equals 0. Do I get lucky? Ooh, I did. Negative 6, negative 4. Well, what if they weren't whole numbers? Could that happen on this? It could. If they wouldn't have been whole numbers, you know how, hopefully, with your calculator, second trace, 0, how you'd be able to get... One, two, three, left. Oh, yeah. One, two, three, right. There's the negative six. You can trap them. You've got to know more than one tool. You can't be a one-trick pony in here. Because if you are, you're going to get stuck at some point. A equals two. Vertical stretch. Hi. Those are the things, if we lock in on that stuff, shoot, this is going to be so easy moving ahead. Not that we didn't do great on the graphing, but when we start to add pieces to it, do we remember the graph stuff? That's why this is going to keep coming back and back and back, just to make sure that we're remembering those things. So don't skip the chart on the back because you're like, I'm just going to do the root work on the front. Don't do it. Don't do it. It will cost you later, and we don't want that to happen. Okay? So, again, puzzle stuff on the front. Yeah, you could try the odds. You could just see, make sure your answers are right. But if you do the puzzle, you're going to know if you're right or wrong or not.